Hi, this is Joe Still. I'm the course designer, lead instructor at the Core Course. This is a short pre-course workbook video on the HP 10B2 calculator. It's very important that you get your 10B2, take a look at this video, download the pre-course workbook, and go through the problems before you come to the live training. This will really help your experience of the live training. It doesn't take very long. Good luck and we'll look forward to seeing you at the live training. All right, so let's talk on the HP 10B2 about the basics of the calculator that we need to know for the workshop. The first thing you need to know is about the menus. There are three different layers of menu on the HP 10B2. The first menu is the white menu. Any key that you press will do what that key says in white. The second menu is the blue menu. If I press this blue key here first, any subsequent key press that follows will do whatever that key says above it in blue. Finally, we come to the gold menu, which is triggered by this button here. We use this quite a bit in the workshops. If I press the gold button, then any subsequent key will trigger the function that's located at the bottom of that button in gold. So to turn the calculator on, the on button's right here. Just do that. And to turn it off, you see how it says in gold or orange, off, I press gold key and then off to turn it off. The next thing we need to know on the HP 10B2 is how to clear the calculator. There are three different ways to clear the HP 10B2. The way that we always do it in the workshop is by pressing the gold key first and then the C button to trigger the clear all function. Now you notice when I hold that down it's going to flash 12P-YR. We'll get to that in just a minute. So gold key clear all is how we do our clearing. If I, for example, just type in 222 and then press the C button once without the gold button first, That'll clear the last entry that I put in. You also have a backspace button right here. Works just like a computer keyboard. The next thing we need to know about on the HP 10B2 is something referred to as significant places. Significant places are the number of zeros that appear to the right of the decimal. So currently the calculator is displaying two significant places. In other words, the cents. Now if I want to change that, let's say to four significant places, here's how I do it gold key and then equals button where it says DISP and then the number of significant places I want to see, let's say four. Now I've got four significant places or I might do gold key equals six or gold key equals zero, whatever my specific problem is calling for. The next key we need to be familiar with on the 10B2 is the plus or minus button here in the left hand column. What this does is it changes something called the sign convention. So let's say, for example, I want to enter $300 negative as a payment. Here would be my key presses. 300 plus or minus PMT. Now you'll notice it shows up with a negative in front of it, meaning I successfully changed the sign convention. The last setup function you'd know how to do on the 10B2 is with this button right here under the MAR, it says begin end in gold. These calculators are set up to do time value of money calculations in one of two modalities, either beginning of year calculations or end of year calculations. We will always use beginning calculations. So the logic on this is kind of reverse double speak. You are in end mode if you do not see the word begin. In other words, you'll never see the word end. So if I press the gold button and then press begin end, you'll see BEG shows up in the display. So I just put it in beginning mode. I do not want to be in beginning mode. So to take it out, same key press turns it off. So the point here being, you do not want to see the word BEG in the display. That means that you are by default in end mode. So the next thing we need to know about on the 10B2 is something referred to as number of payments per year. And this has to do with something called time value of money. If you're doing a calculation and the calculation calls for a monthly payment, that's what's referred to as 12 payments per year. If you're measuring price appreciation, price depreciation, or entering cash flows, then the calculator has to be set for one payment per year. So if I press gold clear all, and again hold down that clear all button, you see it said 12P-YR in the display. That means the calculator is set to do a time value of money calculation in monthly mode. And let's say that I want to measure, uh, for example, price appreciation. I have to change that mode from 12 payments to year to one payment per year. And here's how I do that change. Press the number one, 
press the gold button, and then in the top row, press the payment button. You can see in the bottom of it, it says P-YR. So whenever I change that, I always want to go back and re-clear the calculator. You see it says 1P-YR now, just to make sure that it's stuck. So if I want to go back to 12 payments per year, I simply type in 12, press the gold button, and then press the payment button. Let's talk next about something referred to as time value of money. If you look at the top row of the HP 10B2, there's five different buttons. Starting in the upper left, N stands for time periods. It could be months, it could be years. I slash YR stands for rate, interest, or yield. When you enter an interest rate into the calculator, you enter it as a whole number, the calculator automatically moves that two places to the left. PV stands for present value. Present value is a lump sum that occurs once at the beginning of the investment. PMT occurs periodically throughout the investment term, usually monthly, sometimes annually. FV stands for future value. Future value is a lump sum that occurs once at the end of the investment term. So so let's take a look next at an actual time value of money problem. Let's say, for example, I'm going to borrow $100,000. That'll be my PV. I'm going to borrow this money f at um, just a simple interest rate of 12% for 30 years with monthly payments. So here's how I set up the calculator. The first thing I'll do is press gold key clear all to make sure that my calculator is preset for 12 payments per year. Then I'll type in 100,000 press PV. Then I'll type in 12 and press the interest per year button. Now this next part is very important on the HP 10B2. Whenever I enter the term, which is the N value, I always press the gold key first, and here's why. If you take a look at the bottom of the end button. It says times P-YR. So by pressing, for example, 30 gold key N, what it's doing is it's taking 30 and multiplying it times the 12 that's stored in the payment register. The interest per year conversion will be done automatically. So if that doesn't quite make sense right now, don't worry about it. Here's all you have to remember. Whenever you press this button, always press this one first. Now the way that time value of money works is that you always find three pieces of information and end up solving for the fourth. So in this problem, I've been given the present value, the rate, and the term, that's three. When I solve for the fourth, I'm simply gonna press the PMT button. So here's what the key presses look like. Gold key clear all, I'm in 12 payments per year. Type in 100,000, hit PV, type in 12, interest per year, type in 30, which is the number of years, gold key N. I have three I solve for the fourth, now I just press PMT. And it's a monthly payment of $1,028.61. And you'll notice this is negative when it shows up as payment. That's because this was positive. So the logic here is the $100,000 is money received the payment is being paid out every month uh, by the borrower. So when you enter one sign convention on the front end, it'll automatically change the sign convention on the back end. So let's look at another time value of money problem, this time measuring price appreciation. Let's say, for example, I buy a piece of property and I'm going to spend $200,000 on it. I'm going to hold the property for four years, and I'm just going to make an assumption that I'll have a rate of price appreciation of about 2% per year. This money, the 200000 is actually being paid out. So what will happen is this number is going to be entered as a negative because I paid that money out to buy the property. The four, the term, is going to be entered with gold key N and 2% is the rate, enter that with the interest per year key. So this is a problem about price appreciation. 
Price appreciation problems are always done in one payment per year mode. So the preset will be one gold key payment and then gold key clear all to make sure that the one payment took. Time value of money tells us if I have three, in this case PV, term, and rate, I solve for the fourth, which is going to be future value. So here's my key presses for this problem. One gold key payment, gold key clear all. So I'm good to go, I'm on one payment per year. Type in 200,000 plus or minus to make it negative PV. And again, I only do this because I'm paying the money out. That'll switch the sign convention on the back end solve a future value to positive. Four gold key N, two interest per year. I have three solve for the fourth, press future value. So this property should be worth 216, 486, and 43 cents at the end of four years because I'm, I'm always solving an end of period mode. If we go back to significant places, just press gold equals zero. That'll chop off the pennies. And the other thing I want to mention is you can enter these values, PV, term, and rate in any order. You don't have to do this one first and this one last. You can put them in any order. As long as you have them entered correctly, you'll get the correct answer when you solve for future value.